with patch 1.14, a lot of champions got tweaked, as well as some other cards as well. Most of the changes won't affect the meta drastically, but the Ezreal changes seem to be a huge buff and make it a much more interesting design. The nerf to Wiring Stones and Trundle also make for some interesting changes, but will they still appear on this top 10 list? This is Top 10 Decks Patch 1.14. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on the bell notifications too, so let's dive in. This video has been done in collaboration with Bomber TV. With the rise of Discard Aggro or Tom Kench and Soraka, we see respectively Death Locus to counter wide boards of fragile units and Scorched Earth to serve the same purpose of the Noxen Guillotine and also providing a counter to landmarks, so this is why Swain Twisted Fate is appearing here on the list. There's a mix between burn and a control deck. Twisted Fate is a great card to stall, either to AoE of a wide board, or to stun and set up removal of a big threat. Swain is your finisher, but only if you combine with the Leviathan, which is much more important than Swain himself. It gives you a way to trigger his Nexus damaging trigger. The other cards are pretty straightforward and just removal tools which are also needed to level up Swain. A notable card is Nox and Golotine and it's so easy to basically deal damage with this card uh, and you can set it up nicely with Twisted Fate or Make It Rain to the point where you can spend a turn to remove their board and given that on average you're removing something which costs more than 3 mana, you get the upper hand in that trade. The buff to Shivana is quite a significant one, as well as the buff to Eclipse Dragon. This deck still feels like it's lacking something, and that's probably why we don't see it on higher spots on this list. The deck appearing on this list is due to Shivana being kind of underwhelming, and it's heavily carried by the dragons, which are actually good by themselves. Basically, Shivana is not the power card of this deck, unlike many other decks which revolve around the champions. As for how the deck plays out itself, you basically want to survive early game by either fighting the board presence with cards like Dragon Guard Lieutenant and cheap combat tricks like Pale Cascade and the new Sharp Sight. Or we want to speed up playing with our ramp basically to Herald of Dragons. Then your win condition is like the strength of every mid range deck, so you want to take value trades with challenges such as Fiora or Screeching Dragon. You also have many strike cards at your disposal, like single combat and the strafing strikes generated by Shivana. And then if that's not enough, you also have your finisher cards in the form of Infinite Mind Splitter and the Sky's Descent. On a side note, there's also always the Fiora Wing Condition, which synergizes really well with all the strike cards naturally included in this deck. Overall, this is the first mid-range deck in a long time and it feels like it's also nice to include a new champion. If Dragons and Shivana will get more love in the future, this may well jump to the top of this list, so keep an eye on this arch though. This is your standard Flare Your Shadow Isles control deck featuring a new Fill the Rush card, which came out with the NDA event. It's quite an expensive deck featuring 6 champions and 5 exotics. It's also quite expensive mana-wise too, with 12 cards costing 7 plus mana. With this deck, there's not much going on. You simply control the board against aggro strategies with AoE such as Avalanche, Withering Whale, and Icequake. You can also heal with some of your other removals such as a Vile Feast and Withering Whale. This is where the Shadow Isles thrives at keeping you alive to that late game control peak. Ram, thanks to Widering Stones and Catalyst of Ions. Widering Stones is still a solid option and needed for this deck despite the recent nerf to its health. Later on your win condition is Fill the Rush or Call of the War Mother in other variations of this deck. 
You can feature either card depending on which of these finishes you prefer. It isn't recommended having both of these cards otherwise your hand will be filled with basically too many expensive dead spell cards in your hand in the early game which you obviously won't be able to use. Failing this, simply overwhelm your opponent with Trundle and Trindamir and use Atrocity to finish things off as well. This is Tom Kench and Soraka Star Spring. It's a control deck with a very low average mana cost, with everything costing 4 or less mana. It's also the first deck I'm reviewing that has a landmark, it just so happens this landmark is pivotal to the deck succeeding. Some changes here and there in the meta made it possible for a sleeping art type like this one to finally shine. This deck has several options to go for the win. Pure value is generated by both Soraka for a fantastic healing, and also by Tom Kent removing a unit per turn, whilst you can also heal him with Soraka to keep him alive. Alternatively, you can go for a big Star Spring finisher, which in my opinion is the flashy way to finish and a fantastic way to flex in Legends of Runeterra. For those of you not familiar with the card, it heals all your damaged allies by one at the end of the turn, and if you heal 22 damage in the whole game, using any of your healing cards, you win the game. It's a combo deck at its core, but it also has some control tools to face aggro strategies, mainly Broadbacked Protector, providing both synergies to self-damaging, uh, to then obviously have targets to heal, as well as keeping your Nexus healthy, and also being an okay blocker with some solid health. You also have lots of tools to protect your combo pieces, such as Bastion for buffing and spell shields, Astral Protection for healing and buffing, Sun Bless Viger for buffing, and Guiding Touch for healing and drawing. Loads of tools in this deck. This is a reliable deck which loses in the early game, or it's pretty much unstoppable if you do get past this early game stage. I know this seems a bit surprising due to the number of low mana cards this deck has having a weak early game. Um, obviously decks that normally have lower cost thrive in this part of the game. Fiora Shen did not get hit in this patch, but due to the nerf to control strategies and the rise of aggro and midrange, this is a fair contender in this meta. This is your standard midrange deck featuring cards from Domasia and Iona. The main cost of the cards are spread in a typical way for a midrange deck with a strong ramp to mid game. Value and flexibility are the key words in this deck. Take as many value trades as possible, which is very easy with challenges such as Screeching Dragon or even Fiora. Try to give your cards a barrier with cards like Shen and Repost. This should give them basically keep them alive uh, and allow you to build up a strong army to win in your mid-game peak. Another way you can keep your units alive is through Quick Attack um, and Young Witch gives you access to this and she's actually one of my favourite cards with the Targon release. Link this card with a challenger such as Laurent Protoday uh, and to have basically have combats that suit you and to take out your opponent by obviously Quick Attack hitting them before they can hit you. There's also lots of tricks to take advantage and punish your opponent's play like Single Combat and Sharp Sight. You also have tools to counter big win condition spells with Deny, and in some of this, Nopify, but this Nopify doesn't appear in the deck code I'm providing you today, um, and this obviously can deal with the smaller spells. And if value doesn't win you the game, you also have the Fiora win condition, which is easily achievable with all the protection the barrier art type provides. Fiora win is a game when it destroys four units, which should be easier with barrier cards that you've basically got so much access to in this deck. Overall it's a very solid deck fitting most playstyles and players. This is the deck we love to hate and it's back, Midrange Frostbite featuring Ash and Sejuani. It features cards mostly from Freljord but also contains 11 Noxus cards which work hand in hand with high powered cards and the Frostbite mechanic. This deck has quite a varied mana cost, with there being 6 cards at every mana value from 3 to 6. This deck has a lot of ways to start aggressively thanks to Omen Hawk and the Forest and Trapper mainly. It has also ways to refill your hand with a Forest and Sentry and Babbling Burge. 
There are many ways to remove big targets thanks to frostbite effects followed by calling strike and wide boards are thanks to the reckoning. The main wind condition is ash, often comboed with harsh winds, so make it unable to block most of your board and obviously winning the game with just three attacks. Even though Trafari and Sessa got nerfed as well as the champion spell of Sejuani, this deck is still very consistent. Overall this is a very solid deck, not as fast as other options, but definitely a high win rate and worth considering. Finally we see this deck lose some consistency and be dethroned from the number one spot, but it's still of course a very viable deck. This is Pirate Aggro and it's been here for a while now featuring cards from Noxus and Buildwater. Patch 1.11 did nerf the very strong card in this deck, Petty Officer, however it still remains extremely viable and whilst it didn't actually affect the deck too much then, now in Patch 1.12 we drop him for Iron Ballista and we continue to see the addition of Cracksort Corsair which was buffed in the previous patch. The power cards here are Misfortune and Gangplank. Even if Misfortune will have a very hard time levelling up here, she's just here to be a more consistent way to level up Gangplank and to make your board wide and threatening as possible during your attacking turns, whilst Gangplank can end the game with wide, against wide boards and therefore making an aggro mirror much easier to deal with. This deck has a lot of ways to end the game with burn units like Imperial Demolitionist or Jack the Winner. You also have Zap Sprayfin which is a great way of finding your burn spells like Noxin for 4 and Make It Rain. Finish off the game with the biggest burn spell in the deck, Decimate. Scouts has been staple since the release of Bilgewater, defining what the aggro strategy to beat is. This deck has an incredible curve benefiting from all the great units coming from Damasia. It's basically more Damasia featuring three copies of Misfortune. In patch 1.12, the playstyle of this deck has not changed much, but seems to have success due to midrange doing well in the current meta. On the mulligan you always want to keep Misfortune and Quinn as those are key cards in the deck, but it's also important to have your one drops, Fleet Feather Tracker in particular, so you can also swap your Quinn for a Lucian if you feel Lucian suits your playstyle better, so a little bit of flexibility here. You want to level up Misfortune as fast as possible, which is always great if you want to attack with your scouts. So don't worry about killing your scouts, because basically you just need to get those attack rounds in as much as possible. You also have a lot of ways to generate value thanks to your tricks. Rangers resolve to counter AoEs and get value trades on wide blocks. Uh, and you've also got single combat to remove their key cards, often getting a value trade by doing that. There's also riposte as a way to shield from removal and deal bonus damage. And finally back to back which is amazing if casted on your scout units as they benefit from double the amount for that obviously they're getting two attacks so double the battle bonus. Discard aggro deck remains untouched from several balance changes and so its popularity is continuing to rise with every patch like this one where it's finally getting to S tier. Make It Rain was such a counter to wide strategies with weak units, which this deck's obviously all about, and a nerf to it means that the countered strategies get stronger, hence why it's at the number 2 spot on today's list. This deck remains untouched from balance changes, so its popularity has continued to rise. Discard Aggro has seen a rebirth in some basically more recent patches, and it's still a good contender even in the Targon meta. Features cards from Piltover and Zorn and Noxus, with all but two cards costing four or less mana. It's got a nice addition, which is Poro Cannon, which both synergizes with discard mechanics and gives you cheap elusive units to go wide and then buff all your wide buffs, which basically makes it a natural fit in this strategy. Also, it's not unusual to take your opponent off guard and discard cards like Vision or Flame Chompers in a moment where you're at zero mana and your opponent does not expect any reaction from you, which can lead to some quite extreme punishes if you time it right. Other than that, the game plan has not changed from recent patches. Go wide early thanks to rummage, discarding cards like Jury Rig or Flame Chompers.
After this, then buff your wide board thanks to Vision or Arena Battlecaster. Finally, when you're running out of steam, refill with Augmented Experimenter, the most expensive card in this deck. Overall, it's a pretty fast deck, and its refill capabilities can make mid range matchups easier, which have been popping up more lately. As you'll swain, it's something new that we're trying, so this is the exact death list and win rate that Bomber TV has with this deck. The general statistics are still analysed by Bomber TV, but he still believes this art type should be the top despite his personal success with the art type. So this is a bit of a Legends of Runeterra deck exclusive review for you that you probably won't see anywhere else, for a bit at least, until everyone else finds out about it. With that said, the insane buff to Ezreal made this deck in particular shine, as Ezreal was coming onto C much earlier, and this means you have access to more Nexus damage triggers for just Wayne to stun the whole board. So this makes a deck which was never really that bad at all become even more relevant in this meta. As for the deck analysis, this deck functionally behaves like Swain Twisted Fate, but it's obviously got different region in the form of Piltover and Zorn. So this means it has access to much meta burn tools, which will obviously deal non-combat damage, so like Static Shock and Get Excited for example. This deck is mainly consisting of spells, as you want to remove your opponent's units playing them uh, with basically using fast spells to take them out and punish them for attacking. So if they develop instead, you can punish them for wide blockers such as House Spider and Arachnoid Sentry, stunning a threat or adding a blocker to the board to basically stall the game as long as you need. Then to finish off, slap on a Leviathan, Swain, and or Ezreal onto the board and the win should come very soon after this. So it's definitely a great deck and a Bomber TV personal recommendation. So there we go guys, what do you think to the decks discussed in today's video? I know it's a little bit different uh, analysing a, a Bomber TV exclusive uh, deck, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on what this was like. So obviously 2 to 10 was as normal but one we thought we'd do something a little bit different this time and I know this is the video series you guys love watching the most so I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. The data presented here is analysed by Bomber TV using MOBA Analytics. He's a Masters tier player with a background in game theory and game design. He took the most winning art types into Master tier excluding ones with small play rates, analysed their key properties on why they are so strong. Link to his channel is in a pinned comment and in the card above. What deck are you having the most luck with so far in patch 1.14? I would love to hear in the comments. Up next is best meta decks patch 1.15, taking a deeper dive into the best decks being used in the upcoming patch. Obviously Riot do a big patch every other patch which is why I rotate between top 10 and best meta deck series. Please remember to like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications too. See you next time guys.